Thanks for joining this session. Oh, recording. Awesome. <laughs> um, I'll be taking you through recruitment on day force, which is super exciting. We've got the rest of the business on here um, and we will make it very interactive from a learning piece. You will be able to see everything that we see as recruiters. I'm just going to share my screen because uh, I've got the slide deck to present. So let me know if you can see that. Yep, awesome. Alrighty, so just here we go. Um, so where was I? Dayforce. Why have we chosen Dayforce as a system? The reason is it's a full end-to-end -end system that has everything, not just recruitment. It's got onboarding. We'll be getting learning on here. We'll be getting talent mapping very soon. Basically, the whole employee life cycle will be on day force, which is super exciting as a hiring manager because you can basically manage your employees from the minute they step into the business to ultimately when they decide to move on. Um, people are the heart of what we do at Accent Group and having such a centric people system allows us to grow our people and ensure we've got you know, everything in place for them to support that. In terms of what we'll cover today, we'll um, cover obviously recruitment. Uh, we'll get you all to jump on. Hopefully you've got your laptops with you at the moment. Um, we'll show you where you can locate the careers page and the vacancies um, internally for the whole business in Dayforce, how to submit a job requisition, how to view job applications. You'll be able to see every single job application for your roles, which is super exciting and their resumes and everything from notice periods to salary expectations. You'll be able to see how we hire new team members, how we send their contracts and everything through to onboarding and making sure that we're onboarding our new team members successfully and that they're ready to go, ready to be rostered on before their start date as well. So in terms of recruitment um, at a high level, uh, the hiring manager or uh, line manager is responsible for submitting a job requisition on day force. And that's basically any full-time role in our business. So any full-time support office role, uh, management role at a store level, uh, if it's a full-time sales assistant, we'll need that uh, job requisition submitted. And it's super easy and super straightforward to do. It takes about one minute. Um, if that, you'll become experts and you'll be able to do it probably in less time than that. Once the job requisition is submitted by you as a hiring manager, it then goes through an approval process. It goes to the next uh, level up. So if it's a retail store management role, it'll go from a regional to a national uh, to approve and then at a GM level um, to sign that off. You will be able to track that. Um, at each stage of the process and you will get notified once the job rec has been approved. It's basically what we've done through email, but we've cut out all the emails, no more emails, and it's all now done on the system. And it's very easy to track. Um, and we found that once someone um, approves a job rec, it then goes to the next manager and it's super easy for them to get the notification and then approve the job requisition on the system. Super, super easy and straightforward. Uh, once um, we offer the team member and onboarding is sent, you'll be informed when their paperwork is completed and then you can prepare and start hiring them for um, your team to get ready. In terms of casuals, so we just covered all full-time permanent roles. Casuals, we work a little bit differently on the system um, and we've been a bit more strategic and a bit clever in, I guess, how we manage casuals. We know casuals are about 80% of our business and to ask you to submit a job rec each time we hire a casual will be absolutely ridiculous. Um, so we've cut that out completely and we already have casual sales assistant job recs set up on the platform for every single store location. Um, meaning we already have that ready. There's no need for you as a regional or area manager to jump on and, and submit a job rec. We're constantly recruiting casuals and we have a na nationwide campaign and expressions of interest for all stores and all locations for Glue and New Lucy already live on day force. And I'm pleased to say in the last 48 hours, we've had 200 applications come through already 
to that expressions of interest, um, which is super amazing. People want to work for glue. Um, huge response in the first couple of days. And no doubt we'll probably hit a thousand by the end of the week. So we've already got casuals ready to go and we're just going to find the locations that we can start interviewing and hiring people for, which is really good. We will jump in and show you. You'll play around shortly on how to view these um, campaigns and also these job recs on the system. So don't worry, we'll, we'll take some time shortly to do that. In terms of the recruitment workflow, um, just at a high level, what I've just covered in terms of full-time, part-time uh, uh, or management replacements, essentially once a team member resigns, um, the hiring manager is notified. We do have the uh, resignation termination process on day force as well, which we'll cover later on in the session. Um, Obviously, the first thing we do is contact the relevant recruitment partner or recruiter in the team and let them know that we've got that vacancy. If it's a support office role, we ultimately want to get recruiting as soon as possible. Um, obviously, while they're working out their notice period, we don't want to really have a gap where we've got that vacancy. So we know um, no manager likes a vacancy in their team. We completely understand and get it and we want to move really, really fast. So once the job rec is submitted, um, obviously it goes through approvals. As we mentioned earlier, a recruiter is then notified and then we uh, post the job ads pretty quickly from there and start managing applications as soon as they come through. In terms of internal moves, again, it's very straightforward. For us as a business, we love that we can actually promote within. Um, week on week, we promote about 50% of our employees internally into roles across retail, which is amazing. And we've made the process super, super easy where they can actually apply through Dayforce, go through the process, and your relevant recruitment partner or recruiter can actually uh, generate the contract and ver variation letter on the system. Um, in terms of that process, the recruiter mainly will carry that out from a contract um, employment change piece. The only um, part where you'll be involved is essentially ensuring that we're communicating uh, between the recruitment team and the relevant hiring manager on who essentially we could be moving from one role to the other. Depending on the position that they're moving from, if they're moving from a different business, for example, if it's a platypus team member moving over to Glue, we will need to do that offline purely because of the ABN change. Unfortunately, we can't um, run that process through the system currently. So that's a manual process that the recruitment team will do. But if we're moving team members from you know, one store to the other, it's super straightforward from an employment change process to do that. I believe um, cross-boarding and employment changes are covered in another session because uh, there's quite a bit more information to cover with that, um, but that's essentially the process at a high level. I've got a very crazy cat, so if you can hear noises in the background, he's running a mark at the moment. <laughs> Sorry about the noise. Um, now it's your time to play. So if you've got um, your laptop with you, I would love for you to jump in day four. So you want to make sure you can log into the system, make sure it's all working, that you can see everything that you should be seeing. Um, day four should be on your desktop as an icon um, or if you search your browser um, you just click on it and we have single sign on so you sign in automatically no need to remember passwords or anything which is really really good um, once you log in you should be able to see your team um, org structure your direct reports we know uh, we're working through some that um, have changed recently so don't be too alarmed we're working through those changes if it's not essentially 100% correct from what you can see. Um, but recruiting should be across the top of your dashboard um, or it, it can be on your left-hand side profile, um, again, called recruiting. Very, really, really easy. Click on the recruiting um, icon and that'll take you through to your dashboard where you'll be able to see all the job requisitions um, and roles and vacancies that we're currently recruiting for, but you'll also see previous ones as well um, that we've already filled. 
I'll just give you all a minute if you've got your laptops to be able to jump on and do that. Hopefully you've all got the access, there's no issues, signing in. All right, everyone's in. What I might do is also bring mine up at the same time. When you are uh, logged in, we always want to make sure we're under the support manager profile. So you may have two options that um, come up when you sign in, you've got your team member profile and then you've got your manager. Anything that you essentially do as a manager and that's managing your team, recruitment related, approving leave, this is where you'll live and sit in that regard. And as a team member, obviously, if you're requesting leave, that's what that's the profile that you choose to use to select. All right, so when we jump into recruiting, hopefully some of you have been able to see some job requisitions that are already set up and in your name. We have started the process from transitioning from our current live hire system um, onto Dayforce. Of course, we're going to um, start transitioning in the next couple of weeks. So we've already um, gotten a head start and started creating all the jobs that we're currently managing from a vacancies piece. Um, now, my dashboard will look a lot different to you guys. Obviously, we've got access to the whole business from a recruitment piece. Um, but essentially, what um, we're going to do from here is understand how we submit a job requisition. And it's super, super easy. Once you do set, select recruiting, up along the top, you'll see a new um, icon. And that's essentially a new uh, recruitment requisition request. What will come up is the option to submit a job requisition depending on your manager profile. So for, I guess, support office team members, you'll have a support office job requisition to select. And for retail regional managers, you'll, you'll see the retail job requisition. This form is super easy to complete. And when we are filling a replacement role or if we are replacing someone in the business, um, a quick tip or something that um, I find is beneficial is um, selecting the resignation or the, the person who's vacating the employee and the rest pre-populates from there. Or you can follow the form, I guess, in, in sequence, but I guess to make your life easier and to move faster through it, because we know time is limited in your roles, um, if we select replacement resignation um, and the location. As a manager, you have access to your location only, so it should be very quick and easy to um, select your locations. Um, so if we say let's go let's go blue Miranda as an example. Um, and then we select the role that should give you a few options to select from. Super, super easy. We've got the replacement one. Vacating employee. So essentially what you want to always select is who we're replacing and everything else should come up 
automatically pre-populating. Again, you will be able to only see the team that report under you, so it should be much easier to find the team member who's vacating the position. Are there any questions on this part so far? No. Great. Yeah. Jamie. 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 Yep. Hi, Darren from Glue here. Hi there. Hi, We're Darren. Just look at, hi there. Um, just having a look at our job requisitions. I don't see the um, vacating employee. Ah. So. Have you the reason for opening? Oh, have we put replacement? Oh, uh, okay. Reason for opening. Sorry about that. Okay, at least it, yeah. at least it proves at least it proves I'm logged in and I'm doing it. <laughs> Amazing, I love it. Okay, thank you. So good. Yes, that's the part. I, that's probably my bad. I forgot that step. No, no, that's all good. Um, so replacement um, is what we always want to select, and then vacating employee should come up. Very straightforward. And then we just follow the sequence, but it should automatically pick who it is. I've just selected someone here, but I'm not going to make sure that that goes through, but everything else pre-populates for that uh, position. The recruiter will be uh, Stephanie Wynn for retail level or Hannah Hogarth for support office, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with and already working with with quite a few roles that we have at the moment. Um, in terms of is this role in budget, uh, that's really more for project related roles. So you don't need to fill that in. It's not a mandatory field. Uh, we've just got that on there from the previous forms that we used to use manually. Um, advertising required. This is where as a recruitment team, we want to understand uh, whether we need to go to market externally across all job boards that we use, or we could have someone internally in mind where we don't really need to go uh, full market to backfill the role. Um, so as a hiring manager, we'll be guided by you in terms of the options that you select. We know quite a few roles we've had to go externally recently, but if you do have someone in mind um, as well, this is your option to let us know. Target start date. Obviously, that's ASAP, probably tomorrow for most of you. Um, but I guess if there's a notice period working to that or before that, I'm sure is ideal. Again, you don't really need to complete that part. Um, but we know, you know, if there's a business critical role, we, we can be guided by that if you select that as well. Pay class is whether the role falls under full time, part time. Uh, casual, if it's a fixed term contract, if it's a parental leave contract that we're backfilling um, in the interim, uh, we've got to make sure that we're selecting the right um, type. And um, again, looking at the top here is where we'll be guided by the type of role and what type of employment it is. Um, we know most roles are full-time in the business or they're casual for sales assistants, but we know there are some part-time sales assistants as well within the business. A type, we pay either hourly or salaried. We know our management team are essentially on salaries, um, so they'll come under the salaried option and hourly, um, we know more so for casuals. Full-time equivalent um, will always be one. Um, if it's part-time or if it's, um, you know, 50% capacity, you do, I guess, 0.5 for 50%, um, depending on the role, how many days it is. Uh, we can help you with this part if it is a part-time role. We know there's not really that many of them, but we can make sure we get the details right. But don't be um, concerned too much because this goes to approvals and it comes to us as a recruitment team. If you complete a section wrong, we're always checking it anyway. But definitely reach out if you're not sure in the first instance on what to select. Pay group, again, the different 
classifications that we pay under in our business. So award employees, essentially, mainly for our, our retail teams that fall under the different, I guess, the levels of the retail award. We've obviously got um, New Zealand as well, and we're about to open in New Zealand, which is super exciting. So we want to make sure we're selecting the award for NZ uh, and then support office as well. It's support center Australia, and then we've got New Zealand as the option. Then we've got the, um, the levels of GRIA uh, that come up. So depending on management and what level they fall under, we need to select the appropriate level. And we know our management team, especially for glue, can fall under, you know, level six or level seven. And we want to make sure we get that right. What we complete in this form carries over to onboarding and to payroll when we essentially hire someone that fills this position. So this is where we've got to make sure we're being um, very careful and, and putting in the right information. And then we've got the salary range or salary package that we're prepared to go to. Again, this is, I guess, uh, part of the form that we need to make sure we're completing. Um, this is ultimately what goes through the approval process for a support office role. Um, if we're increasing salary when we're backfilling a role, let's make sure we're, we're putting the right, I guess, salary that we ultimately want to be able to go up to. In terms of job descriptions, we um, are still working on loading them all in the back end um, of the system. So don't worry too much if you can't attach the job description on the job rec itself. Um, we know it's probably time consuming to, to be able to do that. Your relevant recruitment partner will reach out to you um, if we don't already have one on file or feel free to just email that through. Um, you could still be working on it as well um, or making changes. So don't stress if you haven't got the job um, description ready at the time of submitting the job rec. We just want to make sure we get that job rec approved and ready to go so we can start advertising. Any questions on the requisition form? No? Great. Okay. In terms of um, once a, a job rec is submitted, we can then view and, and see where it's at from an approval uh, level. So we can actually see who it's sitting with and who's stalling the process, who we need to chase if it's sitting on someone um, to approve. It does go through a uh, various levels of approval. So it'll go through, um, you know, from you as a hiring manager to the next level up, which would be your direct report. And it could be then at a GM level. Um, so it could go to Darren um, for a support office role to approve. And then from Darren, it goes to William um, in our finance team and Adam as well in people before it comes to us. So we know it does go through quite a few processes or people from a support office job rec piece. For retail, um, it really should go from a regional to national level, um, especially if it's a store management role. It doesn't need to go through the extra, I guess, CFO, GM, CEO approval. How to track that as well. Um, I'll just show you an example that's live on my screen currently. Uh, you'll be able to see that your job is pending on your dashboard once you've submitted it. And then this little icon here, this arrow that's pointing right, you can actually see who it's sitting with and where it's at from an approval piece. So this one, it's a support office role and it's sitting with Will at the moment. And we will be chasing uh, the relevant hiring manager to make sure that they're approving um, as fast as possible. But for your reference as well, you can do that too. Jamie. Yep. Gordon, yeah. So I'm just wondering if if someone, um, if it's sitting with someone for approval, but they're away for whatever reason, mm -hmm. uh, can someone override or jump in and override that like Adam or? Yes, yeah, we can override that um, as a recruitment team. So Hannah or myself can jump in and override it. Um, great, great question. We know that's happened recently too. So mm. unfortunately the way it's set up is by role. Um, so it will always go to that 
next level up. But if someone is on leave or is taking the day off, we can definitely, um, you know, make sure that goes to someone else in the interim. Right. So it's up to the um, requisite person to kind of just flag it with you guys and say, hey, there's a bit of a hold up here. Can you yes. jump in and sort that up? Yeah. Yeah. We keep an eye on it um, for support office roles. Hannah and I, um, we're constantly looking at it all day, every day. We're looking at what's pending. Um, majority of the time, it's a team's message to whoever's it's sitting with for approval. I'll, I'll send Will a team's message and say, hey, can you jump in and look at the job recs that are pending? Um, but if we're finding that there's a hold up of a few days, we definitely, I guess, can work around it, reroute it to someone else. Um, but it should be within 24, 48 hours. It shouldn't be any longer than that for roles to be approved. Right. Thanks. Any other questions? No? Awesome. Not all good from here. Great. Um, what if you have a brand new position? How do you submit a job requisition? Well, um, the answer is that we've got a form that needs to be completed. Basically, the way Dayforce is um, set up, it includes all existing roles in the business um, and existing titles. So if we are replacing a role but we're changing the title, we need to treat that as a brand new position. Uh, what we need to do is create that whole new role in the org chart and the org structure um, through payroll. So we've got to be mindful that if we are getting resignations and we're slightly changing titles, that we've got to bear in mind that we need to create that role before we go to market and advertise. We need to have the role set up in the system um, before we can carry over the next part of the process. So we have created a new position request form which looks very similar to the original um, job requisition form that we would complete manually across the business before we got day force. Um, but this is to be treated for new roles only um, and any new roles um, that are, I guess, signed off or approved obviously need to go through GM and CEO level approval if it is a brand new role that's not existing in our structure. Um, and some of the time that's through a business case. We know the next financial year is coming up, so there could be some brand new roles on the agenda, um, and this is the form that we would complete um, in terms of getting that all ready to go. Super straightforward. This is done through emails. Um, so basically like the old process goes through to Matt Durbin for approval, the relevant CEO in the division um, and Adam. Once it is approved, payroll then uh, organised to set up that job in Dayforce. And they tend to do that within 24, 48 hours. So the recruitment team, recruitment partner would be myself or Hannah for support roles. Generally is support office roles that we get new positions. Um, at a retail level, if it's a brand new area or regional manager, um, the same principle applies. We will um, liaise with payroll to get that role created. And then we will set up that job rec for you because it's already gone through the approval process. So we won't ask you if you've completed this form to then jump in and wait for the role to be set up. We will, we will carry out that process for you. So all we need is this form to be submitted, the job rec that accompanies it. If it's a brand new role, we hope that there's a job um, description, sorry, not a job rec, um, and send that through to myself or Hannah, and then we'll make sure it gets created. And once it's created, we'll get advertising. Bear in mind it may be, uh, you know, a day or two longer than the day force process because it is a brand new role in the structure that we need to set up. And all the information on this form asks for cost centre, the hiring manager, the reporting line. So making sure that we complete all the details that we need will be easy for the payroll team to then set up the role in the system. Is there any questions on new position requests? Uh, 
Right. Right. So contracts, when we have hired someone or we found someone that we want to employ, um, who does contracts? And we know there's been uh, quite a few uh, questions back and forth on, on where they sit. Um, and basically the recruitment team or we've got our contract support coordinators who support us with contracts across the whole business. And that's Deal, Rachel and Bree in the recruitment team currently. Um, for casuals and variations, we ask uh, those to come through to the talent email, talent at Accent GR, and either uh, Bree, Dill or Rachel will jump on and complete those. But you can also request contracts through Dayforce as well, which we will um, show you in a moment too on how you do that for casuals. Um, in terms of vacancies or roles sitting with recruitment, your relevant recruitment partner, whoever is uh, assisting or supporting with the recruitment for that role, will generate the contract through Dayforce um, and you'll be able to see that as a hiring manager on the system. For fixed terms, a comment, parental leave and variations, um, we ask to email talent and also the people in box, um, especially for... I guess, parental leave and variations um, and either the recruitment or HR team, depending on who it is, the internal team member um, or what the variation is, one of the coordinators in the team will jump on and complete that, whether it's on day force or if it needs to be a manual contract. 80% of our contracts are done on day force um, and that includes variations. And as a hiring manager, you will be able to view uh, whether a contract has been sent to the team member um, in your team. Bearing in mind, if we are moving a team member from another team that isn't in your team currently, um, you probably won't be able to see that because um, you can only really see the team in your current team. But the recruitment team or even HR can support with letting you know that the contract's been signed, it's been returned um, and everything's good to go in terms of the team member transferring from one department to then your department coming up. Any questions on contracts? Quite straightforward. I think we've been doing a few um, for the GLUE team quite recently and also support office, which has worked out well. Okay. In terms of the approval process for contracts, you will receive an email notification. Um, you always get an email notification as a hiring manager if you're doing anything on day force, which is great because you'll be able to be looped into the process. So even when a job requisition is approved, you'll get a similar notification through email to let you know that it's been approved and recruitment are ready to advertise the role. For contracts, you'll uh, receive a notification like this one um, and it will come to you to make sure everything's all good to go before we it goes to the new team member that we are hiring. So a decision request is pending your approval and you'll need to log in to Dayforce to be able to view that contract. Once you log in, again, you'll be able to see um, the pending action in your dashboard and it'll be on your home page. You'll also receive an e a notification in your notification centre as well, which is on the top uh, right-hand corner. There's a, a little mail icon in Dayforce. But most of your pending actions or things for you to do as a manager will be sitting in um, your dashboard, which is super easy to view. You, um, once you uh, select the contract and review it and make sure it's all good, you will accept that and then it'll go to the, hire, uh, the new team member. It doesn't go to anyone else after that. Um, HR have already reviewed it if it's a support office contract. So you're basically the, um, the 
the point before it hits the, the new team member. So if there is a mistake, we need to make sure that we're declining it um, and we're redoing the contract, but we're making sure that there are no mistakes before we get to that point anyway. When a new hire receives a contract, this is what they get. So they will receive a email notification and we have partnered with DocuSign. So everything's done electronically. There's no printing, there's no um, you know, manual signing of contracts that need to be done. And they basically click the view letter icon in their email. It takes them to uh, a browser to view their contract and they literally just accept that and sign it electronically. We then receive that back in the system. So literally they can um, accept that within 30 seconds. Hopefully they read it um, and it's not that fast. Contracts have quite a few pages to read over, um, but it's super easy as a new hire coming into the business to accept the contract. Once the contract is accepted, the onboarding workflow is then kicked off um, and uh, the recruitment team are the ones who will be responsible for that. Uh, for new hires coming into the business. So once the recruiter is notified that the contract has been accepted, they kick off the onboarding process, which includes them setting up their profile on Dayforce, making sure that they receive onboarding forms such as their banking, their tax, their super, um, you know, vaccination certificates and all the forms required that they need to complete before they start. You as a hiring manager can also view onboarding um, and what they've completed under the onboarding section in Dayforce. So on the, the left-hand side of your uh, dashboard, there'd be an onboarding section to be able to look at. I might just jump out and just show you where that lives. So easy if I go back to the home page and just on the left hand side menu we've got onboarding just above recruiting and then onboarding employees. It's filtered by the last search that I did. You can uh, type in the name of the new hire on who you're expecting to start within your team um, and you can track their onboarding through this section of Dayforce. Again, you should be able to view um, just your team Hopefully um, it, it doesn't show a whole list of people. Um, it's only limited to your area in your department. Any questions on onboarding? Jamie, did you want to just open one of those just so they can see that checklist, especially yeah. for the retail guys? I think it'd be handy. It's a really good follow-up tool if you need to know um, what onboarding forms have and haven't been done. Yep. Um, so I've just... Selected the first one that comes up. Yeah, well, this is a interesting one to show. <laughs> Anna Harrison has um, passed 438 days of doing her onboarding. It's a very old one, probably from Christmas. Uh, but essentially, we've got uh, personal details, tax, super. Um, and company policies, employee task list. I'm just going to find someone that should be more relevant. Damien, can I just also ask why you're looking for that? I've got no one when I go to the onboarding. There's no one under my, under uh, my name. Well, I, also, I can see on, I can see on Darren's, he's got I've all got, the managers I've got in all the, I've got all like the retail casuals and everything on mine, but it's not on Laura's. <laughs> Ah, oh, interesting. All right, I might need to look into that, Laura. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Amy, also just for mine, um, doesn't look 100% right and my structure looks like it's still star on a, um, in J-Force. So probably, yeah. Yep, 
yeah, I think, yeah, we've got to work on some um, changes that have happened with your new role, Elise, and just okay. make sure you can see your whole team. Yeah. Um, some glue ones won't be on here as yet. We've only just started sending some offers for glue on Dayforce um, while we transition over from Flare. But I know there has been some contracts that we've done this week, Laura, so I'll look into that for you. Thanks, Jamie. Hi, uh, Jamie, just a quick one for me as well. Um, Daniel here from Epping. Um, I just had a guy start with me on Monday, but I can't see him in my um, onboarding or hierarchy either. Is that something that will eventually come up or should that be there as well? Yeah, it could be that we have onboarded them through Flare um, instead of Dayforce because we're still currently on the Flare system. Okay. We will be transitioning and going live on the 14th of June. So the whole business will be on day force on the 14th. Um, we're in the process of cutting everything over at the moment. Okay, great. Do you have access to um, another system at the moment? No, just day force. I just okay. want to make sure that he doesn't have to um, complete any forms or anything, you know, to essentially get paid <laughs> or whatever, so... Of course, yeah. If you want to send me an email with their name and I yes. can look into that for you right. as a priority because we want to make sure that they're all good before they start. Yep. Cheers, Ta. Thank you. Any other questions? These are awesome questions. Keep bringing up old ones. Em. <laughs> I'm just going to filter the first day to be more recent. I think it's, yeah, it's got the part of the in there. Yeah, glue management is what we want to check. No one's coming up for me. Ah, oh. oh, there we go. Got some casuals. Okay, so we can see we've recently hired some casuals that have logged in or their first time access email has been sent. Um, so on this screen, we can just see really quickly um, at a high level, what team they're sitting in, um, who their manager is. So it looks like this is Albany, which is opening soon. And then as we go across, we can see their progress on completing forms and onboarding. So I might just click on April Wang. And when we go to onboarding forms, it shows us um, each status and each section if she has completed those. So it looks like all of those have been done. And then there'll be a task list for her to complete and managers to see as well. I think we don't have those anymore, Em, is that right? Yeah, I think um, Kian's removed them for the moment um, just because probably people weren't using them as much as we'd liked and they were getting a lot of notifications. So um, we just turned them off in the meantime. <laughs> Perfect. So even more easier. We just need to keep track of their onboarding, really. That's the main part. Make sure that we've got everything completed before they start. So 
So that's essentially what it should look like uh, when we do have new starters joining your teams. Um, but please um, email me, let me know um, if there's any new starters coming up. Uh, we can just cross-reference and check whether we've done those on day force or, or whether they're sitting in flare. On the 14th of June, once we go live, if you find that people are missing as well, please reach out and let us know. We want to make sure that you can see absolutely everything. This is going to be your bread and butter uh, for all things management um, and team and people related. So it's really important that you can see everything that you need to. Uh, okay, so just a recap of what we've covered so far is creating a job requisition, uh, and that also includes a new position uh, request, checking the status of the job requisition. Uh, we're going to jump back in um, and view jobs and, and see how you can see your candidates. Um, the onboarding process, which we've just covered, Understand what's changing from a recruitment and onboarding piece and remembering that as a hiring manager, it's on you uh, to make sure that everything is um, there that you need. Please let us know if anything is missing, if you're unsure, if you're jumping in for the first time and need guidance on the job rec. We're here to help you. We work as a team. So please reach out if you're unsure. Um, don't put it off because you're not sure about it. We definitely want to be able to work with you to get through. And it's once you once you do a couple, it's super, super easy to do. Very straightforward. I'm going to jump back into the job recs and filter by glue just to make sure that you can all see all the locations that we have set up for sales assistance. Uh, any job rec that has this little Christmas tree on it is called an evergreen, and that means it's here always. And this is ultimately where we will recruit any new sales assistants at any time in the year. So we will assign uh, anyone that we offer for each location to that uh, job rec, and we'll carry over the whole onboarding process through there. The same applies for Nude Lucy as well. So Brie and Steph have been very busy getting everything set up. We've still got quite a few. So we haven't got all the roles here just yet. Um, don't be alarmed if we, we, you've got vacancies and you can't see them. We just started to create them all. Um, but we know once we go live and transition from live hire to day force, everything will be central onto day force. has created quite a few job wrecks. Gosh, the poor guys were keeping them busy. <laughs> it's very, it's, it's growth. You've got a lot it of new scrolls coming up. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, it's exciting. In terms of the, uh, the expressions of interest that we have received over 200 applications for, um, to filter that down it's right on the bottom indeed we love indeed we get so many candidates from indeed um so you all should be able to see this if you can't let me know uh we have made sure that all regionals can um, have access to this job rec uh we are collating applications from all areas because of the growth and we've got the same campaign for Nude Lucy. So we want to get on the front foot. We want to be more proactive in our sourcing. We want to have talent in all areas and so we don't need to be so reactive every time we open a new store. Um, this response has been amazing. Uh, when you jump in, you'll be able to see where they're sitting at um, in terms of status. So we haven't had a chance to shortlist and screen these just yet. Um, but looks like we've got some A grade and B grade applications, which is awesome. Um, what Dayforce does, it has some AI built into it 
um, and it grades resumes and applications based on the job ad and their experience. So we can filter um, by grading and we want to look at the A-grade applications because based on the intelligence in the back end of the system, they should be a good match based on what they've put on their CV. Um, so I'll just jump in as an example to show um, what you'll be able to see as well as us as a recruitment team. It's taking a minute to load. Day force has its moments sometimes. <laughs> Might just go back and try again. Okay, so Abby. The first thing you'll be able to see is Abby's profile, um, her CV comes up straight away. As we work across uh, the top, we can uh, look at her information, so where her personal details will be. It's taking its time this morning. <laughs> Now it shouldn't be this slow. This isn't this isn't normal. Okay. I might just go back again. I don't think it likes this candidate. <laughs> Do this. When you do have um, trouble with day fours, instead of refreshing, it's just best to log out and then log back in. Sometimes it can have its moments, um, but we find that once you go out and go back in, it should fix itself back up. Your most recent job requisitions that you've looked at will always come on um, in your shortcuts on the left-hand side, which is uh, very useful if you've got quite a few jobs that you're looking at. Okay, so Abby, her CV is just loading. Um, but what we can see here, it, it already... Um, Repopulate some of her details. So she's a team member at Yochi Frozen Yogurt, and that's taken from her CV. She's worked at One Seed Organic Perfume as a retail assistant and at a cafe. And that's probably the reason why they've um, graded her as an A grade based on uh, the, the job ad. We can look at her 
job application form under questionnaire, check that she's got the appropriate working rights, um, ensure safety and everything is all covered. We can look at the areas that she's interested in working in. So she's from SA and she's selected um, South Australia. And then we've got uh, the fit for work, making sure that she hasn't got any pre-existing injuries and the vaccination policy that we ask all candidates about coming through the process. So you can work your way through and you can jump in. Um, if you're hiring for casuals, we encourage you to use the expressions of interest um, campaign. This is going to be up all year round. We want to make sure we've got talent um, in the areas that we need. When we know we've got new stores coming up, obviously we will advertise all roles, management and casuals as brand new ads, but we will also look in here to see if we've got anyone that stands out to already consider and be on the front foot. Any questions on the evergreen or the expressions of interest? No. Okay. I'm just conscious of time. Um, really quickly, we'll just cover uh, termination and resignations. Um, so how we uh, submit those through the system as a manager. Um, super, super easy. When we are um, receiving a resignation, we need to make sure we're submitting that through Dayforce on their profile. Um, and payroll will be notified to ensure that we don't overpay them um, after they leave. And we'll also quickly show you the employment change form. So if we are making any team member changes um, for your team or someone moving into your team, we'll quickly show you where that lives. So jumping back in, making sure you're in your uh, manager profile. I'm going to show you under a different one for me. I've got different access. Um, so essentially, when you're in your dashboard, the top right-hand corner, you'll see a little magnifying glass, and that's the search um, section. And that's where you'll search for, I guess, anyone in the business or basically your team. Um, I'll show you an example for me. Um, Brittany in our team recently resigned, so it's probably um, one that I can show you as a hire, as a manager. You'll type the name, you'll bring them up, then you'll go to view the profile. And you'll see forms. So the, the terminate an employee accent, the terminology is probably a bit alarming. If it's a resignation, we call it termination. Um, so essentially, this is the form that will complete if someone does resign in your team. Super easy. Put in the last day. Um, status and the reason which is, would be a resignation more most common. Um, if you would rehire them and their last day in the business and you would attach the resignation letter and submit really straightforward, that then goes to payroll and our people team and we've processed all the relevant documentation for that. Um, an employment change form also lives here. So you would select that as well if you're making any variations or changes to your team members. And this form is very similar to uh, the job rec form in the way that it looks, but it's um, more straightforward reasons that will be changing um, their employment. So if it's a promotion, if it's a title change, um, if they're stepping down, uh, from management to casual, that's a common example that we get in the business. 
you would select this form and complete that. These forms then come to uh, the recruitment team and we can assess whether it's a brand new contract or a variation letter that we need to submit. But I'm pretty sure this will be covered in more detail with Kian's session. Any questions? No? That's it, just conscious of time. I think we're a couple of minutes over time, but thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, hope you've enjoyed having a bit of a play on Day Force. Um, I know in a couple of weeks' time we'll be doing a lot more on here. So at the moment, while we're transitioning, feel free to jump in. Let us know um, if things are missing. Please email me as soon as you can and we can look into that. Um, but we want to make sure from the 14th that we're good to go. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Thanks guys. Jamie. Thanks, Emily. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Have a great Thanks, day. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.